Hey all. So back with yet another spotlight with context. <laughs> three in three days. This one is for the Luke Cage rework, but I have to give a very important caveat right here at the front. This is still technically in beta, right? So this is subject to change. Technically, so are the last two that I did because they're subject to rebalancing, as will Luke be once he uh, hits the live server. But even more than that, this isn't even on the live server yet and could change again before we get there. So let's just make sure we have those caveats out in front. That said, um, I'm very excited to talk about this because we have been sitting on some version of this rework for a long time now. Um, this was one of the earlier things that I worked on on the side after I joined Kabam. I really love Luke Cage as a character in general. I like the Mighty Avengers as a team. Um, Four-star Luke Cage was one of my MVPs in Variant 1 back in the day. I really wanted to bring Luke into the modern game, and I think the updates that I and the Balance team came up with here do a good job of that. So, let's get into the kit, take a look. Starting off, we have a lot of similar abilities if you're familiar with the current Luke Cage. Bulletproof and near impenetrable skin provides immunity to bleed, that's the same, and reduces the damage of incoming non-contact physical hits by 30%. Now, it would be an incredible amount of work in this game for us to manually go through and tag all of the bullet attacks and give Luke any kind of resistance to them, but this is your nod there, right? Any non-contact attack that deals physical damage is going to just flat out have its damage cut by 30% on top of any armor, physical resist, block proficiency, anything else. So now Luke is going to feel a little bit more bulletproof. Really happy with that. Luke gains 30% attack rating for each unique debuff on the opponent, and 15% attack rating for non-unique debuffs. So what this means is that these debuffs don't double dip, right? The first of each individual kind of debuff is going to grant 30 attack rating, and then any further debuffs give 15. You will notice if you compare this to Luke Live right now, that that is a reduction from his current 40% bonus per debuff on the opponent, period. That is because Luke now has much more reliable access to a lot of debuffs. So trust me, this is not a damage reduction. This is a damage increase, but it does bring down his ceiling a little bit in favor of him feeling a bit more reliable. Moving on to the next bullet, Luke's personal traumas, yep, there's a trauma debuff in here, and exhaustion debuffs are paused during the opponent's special attacks, so you don't have to worry about them falling off while you're waiting out long. Special animations. Yes, that is a typo that'll get fixed before it goes live, don't worry. I also want to call out before we move on to the next section that the bullet that used to be here about Luke having physical resistance against non-critical hits that has just been moved into his base stats. He now has a certain amount of physical resistance all the time. It has also been updated in how it works, so this will also apply to effects like rupture or other physical burst damage, and not just hit damage. So that is actually a pretty big upgrade overall. All right, so there is now a full header for his exhaustion debuffs to talk about what they do for him. Starting off, you'll notice that there is now an 80% base chance on his light attacks, up from the current 30. But I'm going to skip ahead and point out that this chance does go down by 5% for each exhaustion active on the opponent. So once you get 4 up, you're down to 60, and eventually this will theoretically get down to 0, right? Now, the max stacks of exhaustion is 20, but... If you do some quick math, you'll notice that the chance to apply a new exhaustion drops all the way to zero when there are 16 on the opponent. So you're probably not going to get to that 20, right? 
except that this does leave him some theoretical extra room, both for the Jessica Jones synergy and for anything else that gives him extra ability accuracy. So there is still some room there. Additionally, the exhaustions have their same critical damage rating reduction, but have also been made a little bit longer. They are now 12 seconds instead of the 10 on the live server. Like I said, you are going to have much more reliable access to them. This next bullet I very much like, having taken quite a few special threes with Luke when I was using him with uh, for variant. When struck by a special attack three, inflict two of these exhaustion debuffs. So if you eat a special three against somebody like Hyperion, you are instantly going to apply two exhaustions and reduce the chance of you eating another special three because this next bullet is coming back. The opponent's ability power rate is reduced by 25% for each exhaustion debuff on them to a maximum of six. So this does bring down the overall ceiling. This does mean the maximum ability power rate reduction Luke now has access to is 150%, but that means that you can take a base opponent, completely stop their power gain, and then reverse it by 50%. So this is still very, very powerful. And remember, you're going to have it up a lot more because the chance to apply exhaustions is so much higher. So you're going to be doing a lot more damage and you're going to be able to be more aggressive against power gain opponents because you're more reliably going to be inverting their power gain. This is very, very good. A new ability, while the opponent is suffering from at least six exhaustion debuffs, they are also inflicted with an indefinite Sunder debuff, setting crit resist to zero. Now, I want to call out this is another unique debuff, so you are instantly going to get a 30% attack rating boost from um, the first section where Luke gains extra attack for each debuff on the opponent, and you are going to start critting against opponents like Doom. This feels really good. Luke doesn't have a naturally high crit rate. He is a old school, large body type champion, but he does have pretty good crit damage multiplier, and when he sunders the opponent, you are going to start to see some yellowed numbers, and they are pretty big. Very, very satisfying to start landing those against Dr. Doom. His heavy attack now has an ability. It inflicts a non-stacking debilitate debuff, which increases the duration of all new debuffs other than stuns by 35% for 12 seconds. So you want to weave this in. It's going to make your exhaustions last significantly longer, and then there are more um, powerful debuffs later on in the kit that this will also help uptime on. Now, special attacks. This is a bit of an odd bullet, but exhaustion and trauma debuffs on the opponent are paused during Luke's special attacks, as well as the opponent's, and for three seconds afterwards per bar of power spent, paused during the opponent's special attacks. So the exhaustions and traumas are already paused during the opponent's specials. That was talked about earlier. The thing that's getting paused here is that pause itself, which I hate saying out loud, but walk with me here. Basically, this means that if you throw a special two, your exhaustions won't fall off during the special two, and then for six seconds after that special, you have a pause, but that six second pause doesn't expire during your opponent's special, so you get credit for it even when your opponent throws the special. This makes it a lot easier to keep those exhaustions and traumas up, again, by being pretty aggressive. You don't have to be super aggro with Luke. He has nice tools for playing through different rotations, but that has always been one thing he does quite well with the Indestructible, which we'll get to later, and that is still very much true here. Now, Special 1, each hit now deals a burst of 15% of his total attack in physical damage. These get to some pretty decent red numbers when you have a lot of debuffs on the opponent. Makes him work very well with the Hulk Relic, and speaking personally, is also a very nice hit of dopamine on the special one. It feels like your damage cash out now. If a personal concussion is active, then the last hit inflicts a stun debuff for two and a half seconds. Each time this stun is inflicted, its duration is reduced by 33% until the next time Luke inflicts a concussion. So to speak to this, because I'm quite confident this is going to be the most controversial part of the update, 
this does make the stun chain less reliable, right? You are eventually going to run out of duration and then you're gonna to have to go to your special two and break the chain to turn it back on again. That is intentional. My personal opinion is that Luke's current kit is at war with itself. The paralyzing power of a potentially unlimited stun chain is at odds with the safety of his ability power rate reduction and his indestructible effect. The two of those together are very, very powerful, and if one is reliable, then the other can't be. This tying of the stun to the concussion was our solution for preserving the stun chain for closing out the fight, right? This still means that you can use the special one after the special two, get that stun in, do a full combo into a striker, into a full combo, into another special one that will still stun for a good amount of time, into another combo, into another special one, and that's going to kill an awful lot of opponents. That is going to end most fights. It's just not unlimited. So that's the compromise that we arrived at here. I personally feel very strongly that it's worth it. I'm sure I'm going to get a few comments that disagree. We move on to the special two. This now works a bit differently as well. It consumes up to five personal exhaustion debuffs to inflict a concussion debuff for 20 seconds. That's a significantly longer concussion. Reducing ability accuracy by 15% per debuff consumed. Against Mystic opponents, if you consume all five exhaustions, then you get an additional concussion at full strength. So again, this does mean that the ceiling has come down on the concussion. It is no longer 100 or 200 or 500 percent, which was technically possible before. If you got exceedingly lucky, now the maximum against non-Mystics is 75 percent ability accuracy reduction, and the maximum against Mystics is 150 percent. This is still very strong, right? I would argue this is actually a pretty significant upgrade because the old concussion was much shorter. It lasted for 13 seconds and it was much, much harder to actually get it reliably over 100% in the first place. And when you got it, you always consumed all of your exhaustions, which meant that your damage just fell off a cliff. This compromise is going to allow you to keep exhaustions on the opponent, get a much longer window of ability accuracy reduction, still pretty reliably fully turn off abilities against most Mystic opponents. This basically only leaves long shot open. And you still get to keep your damage, right? This is a very powerful tool, and it will set you up nicely to then close out the fight with the special one. So I wanted to talk to why we did that. The ceiling did come down, but the floor came way, way up on actually being able to use this in a fight. Moving on to the special three, this now inflicts a non-stacking 20% trauma debuff for 30 seconds. 30 seconds is a good amount of time. I could potentially see the question, why is this non-stacking if it pauses in so many other places? The reason for that is that Luke benefits quite a bit in longer fights from going special three, special two, special one, special one, special one, right? And because this trauma, like his exhaustions, is paused during both the opponent's specials and his own specials, and for some time after his specials, you can stretch this 30 seconds for a really long time before needing to go back to the special three. It feels really good, right? And that entire time, you're doing more red numbers, you probably have a Sunder up, and therefore you're critting even against opponents with crit resistance. This really brings the damage up. It's also another unique debuff, and so locks in some extra attack. On top of that, Luke's Special 3 still inflicts four exhaustion debuffs, which are themselves much longer now. They used to be 18 seconds, they are now all the way up to 30 seconds, with the trauma, which means that you can expect them to have the same uptime. When the trauma falls off, you'll know that your four big exhaustions have also fallen off. 
And this means that while that trauma is up, you can also reliably have a 100% um, ability power rate reduction, right? Also note that these specify a different max stacks. They obey a different max stacks, right? They're a different exhaustion. So you can have four of these, and theoretically, if you have additional ability accuracy, 20 of the other shorter ones. It also means that these do not count against um, your chance to apply the shorter ones up above. So what I like about this is that at the moment, having played a bit of Luke in his current form lately, because I do have a rank four six star on the live server, it often feels like the special three is just what you wind up at if a fight isn't really going your way and you throw it to get your 18 seconds of feeling like you're doing okay damage and then everything just falls off anyway. That is not what it feels like anymore. The special three feels extremely worth it to me. You get a lot more than 30 seconds of significant improvement from throwing it and it makes everything else you do better. And then moving on to the signature ability, this is still similar. You still get an indestructible, but it is now a passive instead. I know that is what a lot of people said that they wanted. We agreed. It made no sense that Luke Cage was uniquely bad at eating a special three from Doctor Strange, right? So it is now a passive. It additionally lasts a little bit longer at max sick. It used to be 1.7 to 3.7 seconds. It's now 1.5 all the way up to 4. This does go on cooldown afterwards, and it does have a longer cooldown. We're going to call that out, right? The cooldown is a minimum of 35 seconds as opposed to the current minimum of 25 seconds, and the cooldown itself is paused while the opponent is stunned. Again, like I said earlier, the stun chain is at opposition with this indestructible. This is one way of keeping the stun chain and kind of resolving some of the tension between the two. You still get the indestructible, but if the more you lean on the stun chain, the less access you have to the indestructible. The cooldown is also longer because, as I've talked about a few times, everything else in the kit works better now. You have more access to ability power rate reduction, you have more access to damage, you can be more aggressive, you are more likely to turn off your opponent's abilities, right? Everything works better, so you need the indestructible less. It's tempting to look at this as a downgrade, but it's a reflection of the upgrade everywhere else, I promise. And then last, we have a completely new ability. While his indestructible is not on cooldown, meaning while it is neither active nor while the timer is uh, ticking down for it to be available again, but just when it is ready to go and is not up, Luke gains a big old chunk of block proficiency. So he's now significantly tankier. He can wait things out. This also means that he is a good target for the Captain America relic because that allows you to weaponize block proficiency as physical damage. Now, we did call out earlier he has physical burst damage. I'm going to see a lot of the Hulk relic on him, I'm sure. But my personal thought is that the Hulk relic already has a lot of incredible targets. I'm probably going to end up putting a Captain America relic on my Luke, save my Hulks for other targets, and take advantage of the fact that this is another science character with extra block prof to really make that relic work that much better. And that is pretty much the whole thing, right? It still feels like Luke. The kit is very similar for anyone who is used to playing him. You basically have a lot of the same rotations and play styles you can currently have. They just work better. You get better results out of them. They chain together better. And you're going to throw heavy attacks a bit more often because now you have a good reason to, right? But everything else feels pretty much the same. This is the Luke that you know and, for some of us, love, just better. Additionally, his synergies have all been left alone. There are some good ones in there. Again, all of this is subject to change. It could be tuned up or down a little bit from here, but I wouldn't expect it to change all that drastically. 
we've played a fair amount of this and I will at least speak for myself and say I'm very happy with where he currently is. I think he's an absolute blast to play and I'm really looking forward to when this does finally go live. It's going to be great. Let me know in the comments how this sounds to you. Hopefully this excites some of y'all as well. And until next time, thank you so much for watching and take care.